Almost everywhere you look in our state, you see litter. We're almost drowning in trash in North Carolina now. We've even trashed our state's treasures. It's amazing how much litter is on a beach. Our state's beaches, mountains, and everything in between are supposed to be beautiful. It is our brand. It's why people come to North Carolina. But some say litter is tarnishing that brand and threatening our multi-billion dollar tourism industry. If I were someone visiting North Carolina, that would be my first impression, and that's not a good one. It's an impression left on tourists and on business leaders looking to locate here. No one likes litter. I've not met anyone that likes litter. Not even the president. You're the president of the United States is in his entourage sees all this litter and, and it was embarrassing. Some say it hurts our state's economy and environment. There's a lot of trash out here. And we spend millions of tax dollars cleaning it up. It doesn't have to be this way. From WRAL News, this is Focal Point. Drive along just about any highway in North Carolina and you'll see litter construction debris, beverage containers, fast food bags, you name it. Sure, it's ugly, but there's more to it than looks. Cleaning it up costs money. There are hidden costs too. Our focal point, North Carolina's litter problem and the impact it has on all of us. The Blue Ridge Parkway is one of the most popular national parks in North Carolina. Hard to believe anyone would trash this scenic area. It's orange is trash and the recyclables in black bags. But this road right next to the parkway is on park property too and collects plenty of litter. Recycling. The largest uh, component are uh, soda and beer cans and uh, bottles, including water bottles uh, and uh, <clears throat> oh, fast food trash. The Blue Ridge birders formed an adopt a highway group to clean it up. I think the biggest, almost obvious impact is that it, it, it makes uh, the area less attractive to other people who might want to travel here or be here and visit here. From our mountains to the sea, there is plenty of litter to see. We don't like it, no one likes it, and uh, we just need to get people to understand that littering is not okay. It's not okay behavior, not here and not in any other state in this country. Litter cost this state a lot of money. In 2006, the Department of Transportation spent $16.6 .6 million of your money picking up nearly 5 million pounds of litter along state-maintained roads. I can think of hundreds of ways that money could be better spent. Schools, infrastructure, water and sewer. The DOT also spent $47,000 on a litter picker that picks up far more grass than litter. The bulk of the DOT's cleanup work is done by prison inmates. There's a lot of trash out here. Ricky Smith is a convicted drug dealer serving seven and a half to nine years. You do a crime, you got to do the time. These inmate crews cost the state more than $11 million a year. That covers the correction officers, equipment, transportation, and the inmates 70 cents a day in pay. It's far cheaper than paying DOT workers or private contractors to do the job. You would never be able to replicate the amount of litter pickup that you get if you were to have uh, paid employees or contract employees do it. Oof. It gives the inmates something to do, but some say there are far more constructive ways to use inmate labor. You know, to have them do this every week on the same road just doesn't make sense to me. It, we're not attacking the problem. The problem is our citizenry. A citizenry that continues to litter. If we come through here and, and do it today, tomorrow you see the same thing. You know what I mean? They, they, they really don't care. You know what I'm saying? They don't care about throwing it out. They don't. There are hidden costs to that litter, too. It could be hurting our state's $15 billion annual tourism industry. There are different reasons folks travel to different places, but the real reason, over and over again, they tell us they come to North Carolina is for the beauty of our state. And so when I ride along the roads and I see litter, it hurts. It hurts. It's our product. It's our brand. It's who we are. It's what we offer to millions of visitors who come to our state each year. Tourism officials fear litter will keep many of them from coming back and economic recruiters fear it will keep some businesses from locating here. To protect our environment. Senator Albertson says he knows of at least one case where that happened. And that's where they had sold all the litter beside our roads. 
They decided this was not a good place to do business. That really surprised me. Litter can also harm our environment. Just look at this pile of trash in Raleigh's Walnut Creek. We've got basketballs, we've got soccer balls, we've got tires and paint buckets, uh, lots of beverage containers. Sheila Jones is an educator with the Wake County Soil and Water Conservation District and coordinates the county's big sweep cleanups. I really need to jump in and clean that up, don't I? She says stormwater washes litter into streams. Some litter contains contaminants. We can see the litter, but we can't see the chemicals. We can't see the bacteria and the pathogens. We can't see the nutrients such as nu nitrogen and phosphorus. Um, those are all things that degrade our water quality. Including our drinking water. Litter can also hurt or kill animals that become entangled in it or eat it. Litter is harmful to wildlife, to people, to the economy, and to the environment. We don't have the kitchen sink, but we've got the toilet. Along the Blue Ridge Parkway, the Blue Ridge birders find, of all things, a toilet. Uh, a trash can, too. How about that? That's appropriate. They have a message to the litter bugs. What you're doing with littering is uh, hurting all of us, including yourselves. Next, the litter battle going on in communities across our state. And you can see it visibly from the bridge, all the litter alongside uh, the railroad tracks. You're watching Focal Point from WRAL News. What's the first thing people do when they have company coming over to their house? They clean up to make a good impression. And that's what people in some North Carolina communities are doing because they fear litter will hurt their local economy. See the trash along here? Bobby Hurst is a faithful businessman who's fed up with the city's litter problem. It doesn't have to be this way. This trash can be seen from one of the city's major thoroughfares. This is a visible area of the city. Right next to several businesses. It makes people want to shop somewhere else to a competitor if they see a trashy area like this. As vice chairman of the Cumberland County Business Council, Hearst tries to recruit new business to the area. When I would go out to lunch or dinner with some of the clients, um, I would say uh, three of the five clients uh, that would come in would, would mention litter and they would ask, what are you doing about your litter problem? And that was embarrassing to our community leaders that we would have and our, some of our elected officials. A littered All-American Expressway greeted President Bush on a recent visit. Here the President of the United States is in his entourage, sees all this litter, and, and it was embarrassing. A closer look reveals piles of cigarette butts along city curbs. What do they think is going to disappear? Someone's got to pick it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, at least ten or eleven. Ray yep. Worrell counts cigarette butts in <laughs> front of his pizza restaurant in downtown Wilmington. He worries about the impact of litter on downtown business. People that come into town here, they see that, you know, that it's, it's not a very well-kept town, you know, uh, they're not going to want to come back. And that's our whole goal is for them to come to see that Wilmington is a great place to visit and come back. Each cigarette individually is so small and so it's not really seen as a problem to throw out one cigarette butt. But since we have thousands of people throwing out thousands of cigarette butt butts, the cumulative impact is really pretty big. Even on nearby Wrightsville Beach. You know, if people come down to our beaches and they're, they're, they have to wade through trash and there are cigarette butts everywhere and broken glass, that can impact how many people come back and it might impact what they tell their friends. In Charlotte, the county litter prevention coordinator says freeway exit ramps look like many landfills. I know I get calls from people that have relocated here and they'll say, what is wrong with this city? I came from New York and we were not near that dirty. Uh, what was it? A cigarette butt? Cigarette butt, yes. To deal with its litter problem, Mecklenburg County set up its own SWATA litter bug program. It's modeled after a similar statewide initiative where people can report litter bugs using the license tag numbers of their cars. We get phone calls, emails, postcards, and then from that I, I get a good feel of really how much litter is going on. It's mostly cigarette butts. What is the tag number? Uh, it's 9131. 
All right. The sheriff's department her. matches tag numbers to owners, and Brenda sends them a letter about the potential consequences of littering. She says there's an underlying message, too. It also says people are watching, people are concerned about our community and how it looks. She also sends litter bugs, litter bags, and pocket ashtrays for their cigarette butts. There's no excuse to throw a cigarette butt when you can do this. In New Hanover County, the Keep America Beautiful coordinator is passing out pocket ashtrays, too. For instance, if they're on the beach, um, this is a great place to put your cigarette butts and then just dump it out on the trash can on your way back. KAB is using a tobacco company grant to fight cigarette butt litter in the county, starting with downtown Wilmington. The effort began with a count that found nearly 3,200 cigarette butts in just a two-block area. So this is what was on just the two blocks. It was gross. I mean, it's, it's not nice to be in a downtown area that's really dirty and that has litter all over the place. Messages against cigarette butt litter are being posted in the windows of downtown businesses and even on coasters in bars and restaurants. Downtown businesses have sponsored the installation of cigarette ash cans along city streets. Get your tools, guys. It's time to clean. And bar and restaurant owners have organized to fight litter. They hold cleanups several times a month. The majority of what we clean up are cigarette butts. And I, I have no problem with people <laughs> smoking at all. It's just uh, we wish that they would be responsible and use the cigarette containers that we've, that we've put out. To me, it's a factor in deciding whether you're going to uh, have your hold your convention here or bring your business here. In Cumberland uh, County, Bobby Hurst helped form a new organization called Fayetteville Beautiful. We're getting into where we're really studying why and, and make some difference. The organization has identified the city's problem areas and is sponsoring citywide cleanups. It's important to have a clean green city uh, where your citizens take care of their property, have ownership here and love the city. Next, what's the state doing to stay clean and green, and is it enough? Why do you think it's such a challenge to enforce these littering laws? You're watching Focal Point from WRAL News. There are two approaches to dealing with most problems, including litter, prevention, and punishment. The state tries to do both. So why is there still so much litter everywhere? Trooper C.M. McGinnis doesn't like litter. Really, the people who throw the trash out the windows, like with passenger cars and stuff, there's really no excuse. But the troopers rarely write tickets for that. In 2006, the Highway Patrol issued more than 1.1 million tickets, but only 885 for littering. So why can't you issue more tickets? It's a tough violation to find. Um, it's a tough violation to see because most of the time, people do the right thing. When they do the wrong thing, a law enforcement officer has to see them do it. And uh, due to high traffic volumes, and things like that, it can be tough to see. Easier to see and catch are unsecured loads where debris flies off the back of a truck or trailer. The Highway Patrol issued more than 1,200 tickets for that in 2006. Usually on a fairly secure load, like on a commercial vehicle, they usually just didn't realize it. Like this driver on Raleigh's Beltline, who had a large piece of plastic about to fly off the back of his truck. Just kind of get it down secure where it's not blowing everywhere for me. Just a few years ago, maximum fines for littering were increased. Depending on how much litter is involved, maximum fines range from $1,000 to $2,000. And a judge can levy a point on a driver's insurance. It doesn't seem to have had a lot of effect, you know, and you, and you wonder why. You think that would really get people's attention, but... Uh, it's going to take more than that. The amendment is adopted. This year, Senator Jim Jackman introduced a bill that would allow someone to be charged with littering based on the sworn affidavit of a witness. Law enforcement's got so many things that are so much more important that uh, they simply have no time to spend doing this. Jackman's bill died in committee last session. So did Senator Doug Berger's bill to place a 10 cent deposit on beverage containers. He hoped it would help eliminate at least that portion of the litter problem. I just think it's an important idea uh, that we need to put out there for the, for the legislature to take a look at. 
But opponents of this so-called bottle bill say it's unfair to single out the beverage industry. There are other states that do not have bottle deposit bills that have good statewide anti-litter programs that have had quite a bit of success. Police officer, free, free. Illegal dumping and littering are against the law. Studies have shown that the most successful way to reduce litter is through targeted paid anti-litter advertising in the mass media. Some people have a deep abiding respect for the natural beauty that was once this country. Who can forget the iconic Keep America Beautiful TV ad from 1971 with Iron Eyes Cody? KAB updated it in 1998. Mamas, tell all your babies, don't mess with Texas. At the state level, many point to the Don't, don't Mess With Texas ad campaign as an effective effort. Don't mess with Texas. South Carolina also has an aggressive campaign called Statewide Palmetto Texas. Pride. Another successful program from Palmetto Pride, your anti-litter organization. But North Carolina has no broadcast media campaign targeting litter. The DOT says it can't afford one. In North Carolina, we're mean about clean. A couple of years ago, the state did produce radio spots with the slogan, Mean About Clean, and a song by the same name. I love Carolina, I know you do too. If we want it looking good, we've got work to do. We've got, got a little a problem up and down our roads. Let's all join hands and sing together, litter's got to go. State Senator Charlie Albertson wrote and performed the song. When you see all this stuff that people throw out just carelessly, uh, it makes you ill. Yes, it does. It makes you sort of mad. Albertson is among a growing chorus of leaders who say it's time to do more to fight litter. The state does have these keep North Carolina clean and green signs, but they're hard to read at highway speed and even the DOT questions their effectiveness. Just take a look at how many uh, speed limit signs we have out there for speed enforcement. Mm. The DOT also has a SWAT a litter bug program like Mecklenburg counties where people can report litter bugs using their license tag numbers. It's about the biggest thing we've had lately. The yeah. DOT also sponsors nearly 6,000 adopt a highway groups across the state. <laughs> In 2006, those volunteers picked up 3.6 million pounds of trash. That's about $4 million a year they save the taxpayer uh, in the labor costs of picking up the litter along the roadsides they've adopted. Next, what just one person can do to clean up our state and send a message to litter bugs. The world is not your ashtray. Keep your butts in the car. <laughs> To learn more about the issues covered in this episode of Focal Point, visit WRAL.com and click on News, then Documentaries. It may sound cliche to say everyone can make a difference, but it's true. When it comes to litter, that can mean volunteering to pick it up or finding ways to send an anti-litter message to others. Karen Jones used to confront people she spotted littering. Some followed me home, some threw stuff back at me, some were just really, really creepy looks. Just decided to zip my lip and post the plate. <laughs> Karen launched her one van PR plan after seeing so much litter across our state. There's very few places that you can look that there isn't trash. I mean, it's on the beaches, it's on the, you know, the side streets, it's on the highways, um, it's in the parks. I think people just have lost their desire to uh, keep it beautiful. And, and there's really no reason for it. That tree right over there that's got a lot of stuff behind it. Bill Garibrand agrees. It's not a good idea to just throw your trash out the window. He uses a homemade raft to clean trash out of the stream that runs behind his house. It's just one of those things that you make up your mind that you're going to do. Like Karen Jones' hate litter plate. I just hope it's just a symbol to somebody that maybe they should stop and think before they do it. Maybe North Carolina needs more symbols to help people get the message. There's another Iron Eyes Cody out there somewhere that, that uh, we could do a commercial on. And just what would those iron eyes see if they looked at North Carolina?